This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at the new features in Apple Final Cut Pro 10 version 10.4.4. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll illustrate the new Comparison Viewer. What the Comparison View allows us to do is to compare two shots, and there's a couple ways that we can do this. If I put my playhead on the frame that I want to compare something to, go up to the Window menu, go down to Show in Workspace, and select Comparison View. Keyboard shortcut is Control-Command-6. Comparison View compares the current shot the playhead is in with either the previous edit or the next edit. For instance, if I click on Next Edit, this is the first frame of the following clip, or the last frame of the previous clip. The comparison view is always a still frame. It's never a movie. And when you're in timeline mode, it is always the last frame of the previous shot, or the first frame of the next shot. We can change exactly what we see by going up to the View menu. For instance, here I can turn on Video Scopes, and I can compare the scopes of the shot in the Comparison View to here, view, Show in Viewer, Video Scopes. So now I have the scopes that show me the shot in the Comparison View and the scopes that show me the shot in the Timeline and I can compare the differences between the two. Clearly the timeline shot is a bit darker. It's uh, got a bit more of a spike here and our mid-range isn't quite as good, separate and distinct from the ability to see color. We have all the same arrangement of scopes. I can switch this to the vector scope in both cases, the same way that we're used to when we're doing color grading. Clearly the shot in the timeline is shifted toward blue-green where this is still a very orange-red color. We can see that both in the engine and in the gravel. Now keep in mind again that the comparison view is always stills, and it's used to help give a reference shot to the shot before versus the shot after. Now this alone is helpful, but there's another feature to the comparison view that makes it even more useful. By the way, just so you understand, I'm running my screen at 128720 because it makes the text really big and easy to read. If you're running your screen on a 5K iMac, the text is going to be a lot smaller, but you're going to be able to see more of the picture and more of the scopes within the real estate of that greater resolution on your monitor. So let's hide the scopes here and click on Saved. What Saved does is it opens up a frame browser. When I click on this, the frame browser allows me to capture stills in this library. I can capture up to 30 of them and therefore use shots that aren't next to the clip that I'm comparing inside the frame browser. For instance, let's just capture a frame here. Move this out of the way. <laughs> Move it out of the way to the other side. Okay, breathtaking, right there. That's the shot that I want to capture. So open up the frame browser and click plus. There it's now captured that frame, and notice that frame shows up in the comparison view. Let's capture a different shot. Let's capture this one over here. Move this back again. There's an advantage and a disadvantage <laughs> to having a small monitor. And that's because stuff seems to want to get in the way. All right, let's just trim this over a bit to get more of a shot that I want. Right about there. I want to see the colors. I don't need it to be in focus. Click the plus key and we'll add that. And now let's just make things even more complex. Let's turn on the browser. And let's say that there's this shot here that I want to retain. I love that orange right there. So I'm going to select the orange. Can I add that to the frame browser? There it is. So there's the shot that I want. So now I've got my frame browser. It's ultimately going to be five uh, images across, six images down. And I can switch between the different shots by clicking in the frame browser to see which one I want to use. And we turn the frame browser off by clicking here, frame browser on, frame browser off. I can also use this button to save the frame. Go up to the view menu, turn video scopes off here, or turn them on. But you know how all that works, because all that stuff has been around for a long time. So the comparison view gives us up to 30 stills. 
that we can reference inside our project. Now, there's some limitations. Number one, comparison view is stills only, no video. Number two, the comparison view can only hold images from within the same library. I cannot build them like a, a, a looks database from multiple libraries. That won't work. I can build a looks database, a frame browser database, listing of shots from within the same library, even though the shots are not in the timeline. You can do that. When you have more than 30 stills, the oldest still gets erased, so it's always the newest 30 stills that are stored to the frame browser. Okay, let's put this away. Go up to Window, Workspace, Uncheck, Comparison Viewer, and put that away. Show the browser. We're showing the browser, by the way, with Control-Command-1. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at the new features in Apple Final Cut Pro 10, version 10.4.4. For the complete version of this training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 267. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only nineteen ninety nine. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times every month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.